Hello everyone, thanks for joining me on my first ever YouTube video. This video is the first video on what I hope is going to be your series of videos on how to get data out of Microsoft Access and into an Excel spreadsheet. I work with customers that uh, love to get their data in spreadsheets. They like the interactivity of it versus you know, uh, the, the fixed format of a, of a printed report. So I've had to do this quite a bit in the last couple of years. I've used three different methods to do it. Uh, the first method that I have at the very top here is the one in, uh, the one in red is the transfer spreadsheet method. It's a, a fairly easy method to use. It only requires a couple lines of, of Visual Basic or VBA code. Uh, however, it's the most limited uh, method in terms of what you can build on the Excel side. And the shortcoming of it, I guess, would be that you have no control over how the data is laid out in the spreadsheet. It's going to plop down your data starting in cell A1 and it's going to go across and it'll go down and that's all you get. Uh, that's all the control you get. Whereas uh, if you need more control over that or if you need more control over the format of the final spreadsheet, you know, need to automate um, Excel. In other words, we can use Access to start up an instance of Excel, open up a spreadsheet or open up a blank spreadsheet and put that into that new spreadsheet. And there are two methods I've used using automation. There's the copy from record set method, which we'll cover in the next video. And then there's writing values directly to the spreadsheet cells. And I'll cover that probably in the third, I'm thinking the third video in the series. And the office automation has uh, pros and cons. Well, one of the cons, I guess, would be that there's a ton more Visual Basic you have to write to automate uh, Excel this way. However, it does give you the greatest amount of control over the, uh, the appearance of your spreadsheet. You can, uh, you can arrange the data differently using the third method. Um, you've got, uh, you can use all your formatting commands from Excel. You can put formulas in there if you need to, conditional formatting, and you can even do some graphing. So in this video, our goal is simple. We want to get data from Access into a spreadsheet. I'm using a very simple example. I'm not building out a fully productionized database for you. I want to be able to focus just on the topic of transferring the data and not have to worry about building in the, the table driving of variables and query names and file names and prompting users for file names and all that kind of stuff. Okay, we're just, everything's going to be hard coded right now in, in this example. And I've got very, very simple error handling in the database. Just enough for us to, to see if there's an error that, that, that occurs. So let's go over to our database. I have a database prepared for us. Let's look at where we're coming from. I've got a simple table here. It's got four columns. First column is record ID. It's, a, uh, it's our primary key. It's just an auto number field, just to make sure we keep our, our rows unique. Uh, a part number, a part name, and a price. Let's have a look at the data. I loaded, looks like about eight rows of data in here. I'll minimize that a little bit so that we can make that smaller so we can see our query. I've got a query here. Now, the transfer spreadsheet method, it can send, if you give it a table name, it'll send your entire table over to the spreadsheet. And if that's what you want, then that's, that's fine. But if uh, you don't want to send all of your data to the spreadsheet, then you need to use a query. For instance, um, I don't want to send my primary key over to the spreadsheet. And if I want to do that, then I need to write a query. It will just select the columns that I do want to send, part number, part name, and price. So here's a query we use. We'll substitute in, you substitute the query name in for where the uh, table name should be in the, in the method. Uh, fairly easy, uh, fairly straightforward query there. So let's go to our form. Again, I have a very simple form built for us. It's just got a title here, and we have a button. Show the property sheet. There we go. Out of the way. So our click method of our button. I gave our button the name of command transfer. Right there. Our on click event. Pull up the code window. You can see here. I've got, like I said, I've got very simple error handling. The on error go to sub error, which is here. And all I've got in there is a message box giving us the error number and the error description giving us the old uh, exclamation point, or I guess the hand, I can't remember which one it is. 
this is where we're going to put our code below there. I've got a message box that can tell us things went well because this method gives you no indication that anything at all has happened. You click your button, the method executes, and you're just sitting there going, well, something happened? So that's why I've got a button down here just to give us some sort of indication that the code actually ran and something happened. So let's do, let's get our command here in the window. So there are two ways we can use IntelliSense to help us in typing in this method. One method is the positional method where you, uh, you let IntelliSense tell you what, uh, what parameter is needed and you give it the value. The other method is where you can explicitly uh, specify which parameters you're uh, supplying values for. We're going to use the positional method first, so that we use the do command. And it is transfer spreadsheet. There we go, right there. And then we get the prompts. So our first parameter is transfer type. And you have a choice here. Uh, this method can pull data from a spreadsheet into an access table. That would be ACK import. And then we can take data from a table and send it out to a spreadsheet. That's ACK's S board. And that is the topic of this video. So we're going to choose that one. Our next one here is spreadsheet type. These refer to versions of Excel. This one, the 12 XML, this is the XML version of, uh, of uh, or refers to the XML versions of, that, of, of Office, right, in 2007. Microsoft switched over to these, these XML formats behind the scenes. And this is used for starting with Excel 2007 and going forward. It works for 2007, 2010, and 2013. The next parameter is table name. So here's what I was telling you about. You can send an entire table over, or if you need to filter rows or only send certain columns, you need to give it a query name. So if you wanted to send the entire table, you would type in your table name here in quotes. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to type in the name of our query because I don't want to send our primary key over to a customer spreadsheet. And our query name is query all parts by number. There we go. Comma. I'm going to go down to the next line here. Use the line continuation. Which is an underscore. Next parameter is file name. Again, I said I didn't want to table drive much stuff. I didn't want to prompt the users for anything here. I just wanted to focus on this method. So I'm going to copy and paste a hard-coded file name in here. Um, don't do this in a production database. You want to have some some other method of determining what your file name is going to be. But for our example here, that's what I'm going to do. A couple more parameters that we're not going to use, though. Get our IntelliSense back up. Has field names. This is a part that's just used on import. We're exporting, so we don't need it. But it, what it tells you, though, is if you're, you're importing data from a spreadsheet, is the first row in the data you're specifying, is it your column names? Okay, the next parameter there is range. Again, this one is also just used for import. We won't need it here either. And that allows you to tell it on the spreadsheet side when you're importing which rows and columns to pull in. You know, it's kind of nice that it gives you a choice not to have to pull in everything. And then there's one more parameter down here, use OA. I have no idea what that is. But Microsoft says that it's not used right now. So we get rid of our commas here. We're not going to use any of those last parameters. And that is it. One line of code. We'll transfer our data. So I've just saved. Save again. Save again. And go over here. I'm going to let's see. Let's close our table. Let's close. Let's close our proper window. And close our query. And pull our form up and actually usable manner. Click our button. There we get our success message, which was right below the method, right? Our method executed, and then we get our, mess, our message box that says file export successfully. So let me head over to the folder. See how I was hard, hard coded a folder on my desktop where I wanted that file to go. I've already got that window open. It's right here. And there's our spreadsheet. Part number, part name, and part, excuse me, and price. Those are our eight rows. Those are just the three columns we wanted specif we, we specified in our query. I'd like to point out, though, 
it does give you column names automatically. However, it, the column names it's going to give you by default are whatever's in the query or in the table. In this case, we didn't give the, any, any aliases in the query. We just have it gave us the column name, part, no, part name and price. So if you want to show your customers something a little bit nicer than that, you need to back, go back over to your query and pull up the design view and give those columns an alias. Now I want to have a space in my column name, so I gotta use the left, gotta use brackets for that. Part, and I spell it out, part number. And our, give this one an alias as well. It is part name. Save our query, let's run it real fast, make sure it works. And it does, you can see here we got spaces of part number. Spaces and part name. Yes, I want to save. Okay. Back over to. Oh, no, we're not going anywhere. Transfer, spreadsheet, click a button. And it ran again. So back over to our folder. And here we go. There we are. Now we have a space between part and number, and it's spelled out as number. And a space between part and name. So it looks a little bit nicer for them. <clears throat> a couple things to note here. One, you may have noticed, I did not delete the spreadsheet before I ran that method a second time. And we got no error messages, we got no prompting from Access. This method will overwrite your file, and it will do it without asking. And I cannot find a parameter anywhere in that syntax to tell it to ask. So just be aware. If you've got hard-coded file names, good chance you're going to write over last week's spreadsheet or last month's spreadsheet unless you put some code up above. Let's go back to our window. You put some code up here somewhere that looks at the file name you intend to use to check to see if it already exists and then do something. You know, prompt the user on what to do or add a number to the end of it or, you know, something along those lines. The other thing to notice is that like I said, it just plops the data down, column and rows. There's no formatting. You've got no opportunity here. There's no opportunity here at all to do any sort of formatting on that spreadsheet. You've got no, you've got no relationship with that spreadsheet at all here in your code. You have no variable or object here that, that refers to the, the spreadsheet. So there's nothing you can do to it. It just plops the data down. But if that's all you need, if your customers are just saying, I just want these rows and columns of data, then this is perfect because there's just not a whole lot to it. It's very simple to do. Now let's look at, let's run, let's type in this command one more time, but use the, uh, the more explicit version of specifying the parameter values. Let's show that. So instead of what we had up here, where we're just going to rely on IntelliSense to tell us which parameter is supposed to come first, you can specify which ones, oops, and what order you want to put them in. So you type in the name of the parameter colon and equal sign and then uh, you can choose IntelliSense does give you a choice there the next one I'm going to use is spread oops sheet type colon space and again we use a 12 XML version and then continuation um, table name colon space Let's copy in our query name. There. Comma. And file name. And let's avoid getting the ugly error box. We'll copy it from somewhere else. There we go. So this should work the same as the other one. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to delete the spreadsheet. Just grins. Run it again. It says successful. Go back to our folder. There it is. It should look the same. And there you go. So that's fairly straightforward. Um, low number of lines of code in order to, to transfer your data. I like that one a lot. If it's if it'll if it'll work for your customer, if it if it meets their needs. 
In the next video, I hope to cover uh, automating, act, automating Excel, and we'll use the copy from record set method in that, in that video. So thanks a lot for watching, and I do have one question for you if anybody watches this anytime soon. Um, I'm curious about what you think about the audio quality of this video. I'm using a microphone on a webcam, and it's about two feet from my face. So I'm curious um, how audible I am, how clear it sounds to you guys on your end. So if anybody wants to comment on that, I'd love to hear from you. And I'd also love to hear any suggestions you might have on how I can make the videos better and uh, future topics. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.